Ever wondered how a billionaire spends his mites? Well, meet Bruce Wayne, the man behind Gotham's iconic hero, or better known as Batman. Despite its brief three-season run, Batman, the animated series left a mark on fans worldwide with its classic plot and probably the most OG villains of the entire franchise. Before we start, let's set some context for a better understanding of the series. Our story unfolds in Gotham, a fictional American city played by crime of all sorts from ordinary goons to outlandish supervillains. At the center of this chaos is Bruce Wayne, Gotham's wealthiest resident and a billionaire entrepreneur. But here's the twist. Bruce's response to the city's despair is rather unconventional. He dons a bat-themed costume equipped with cutting-edge technology and gadgets to combat crime. Assisting him are Alfred Pennyworth, his loyal butler, and Commissioner Gordon, the head of Gotham's police force, who works closely with Batman to maintain order. Alongside our caped crusader, we encounter a colorful cast of villains, including the Joker, our favorite, Two-Face, the Penguin, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, the Riddler, and Harley Quinn, each adding their own flavor to the complex world of Batman. The show also gave life to a lot of forgotten characters like Killer Croc, Mr. Freeze, Clefus, and Clock King. In the first episode, The Cat and the Claw, Catwoman commits a daring theft in Gotham City, catching Batman's attention. However, despite Batman's pursuit, she escapes, leaving behind her loyal cat, Isis. Later, Bruce Wayne finds himself auctioned for charity, winning a date with Selina Kyle, who is more interested in saving endangered animals than romance. Meanwhile, Batman uncovers a plot involving Red Claw, a dangerous terrorist leader who plans to unleash a viral plague. Selina's investigation into Multigun International leads her to uncover Red Claw's sinister plans. As Batman and Catwoman clash, they reluctantly team up to stop Red Claw's scheme. In the end, Catwoman's actions inadvertently reveal her true identity to Red Claw's minions, setting the stage for future conflicts. In Gotham City, sightings of a bat-like creature lead to a series of robberies at pharmaceutical companies. Commissioner Gordon Mayor Hill and DA Harvey Dent plan to capture Batman, suspecting his involvement. Conversely, Batman investigates, discovering a pattern in the robberies and infiltrates Phoenix Pharmaceuticals. Meanwhile, Detective Bullock forms a task force to apprehend Batman. Batman narrowly escapes multiple traps set by the task force. Later, Bruce Wayne seeks help from Dr. March and Kirk Langstrom at Gotham Zoo, suspecting the bat creature's involvement. Kirk, secretly the creature, attacks Batman but is subdued by his wife, Francine. Batman discovers Kirk's transformation was caused by a serum from Phoenix Pharmaceuticals. He reverses the process and returns Kirk to normal, but remains vigilant as mysteries linger. A mysterious armored man, Mr. Freeze, seeks revenge on Goth Corp for separating him from his terminally ill wife, Nora. Using a Freeze gun, he creates chaos in Gotham. Batman investigates and discovers Freeze's tragic backstory. Meanwhile, Goth Corp's CEO, Ferris Boyle, reveals his callous nature when discussing Freeze's past. Batman learns of Freeze's true identity and motive. However, Freeze plans to attack Boyle's awards ceremony with a giant freezing cannon. Batman confronts Freeze, who overpowers him until Batman uses hot chicken suit to crack Freeze's helmet, defeating him. He ensures justice for Freeze by exposing Boyle's cruelty and providing evidence of Freeze's tragic accident to the public. Freeze, now in Arkham, mourns his failure to avenge Nora. Bruce Wayne is implicated in a scheme involving Roland Daggett's illegal activities, orchestrated by a disguised Matt Hagen, a famous actor addicted to Renyu, a transformative chemical. As Batman intervenes to save Lucius Fox from assassination, Hagen's true identity is exposed. Daggett's henchmen attempt to eliminate Hagen, forcing him to use Renyu excessively transforming him into a clay-like creature. Batman confronts Daggett's men, extracting limited information before they are incapacitated. Meanwhile, Bruce seeks to clear his name but is apprehended. Hagen's transformation into a clay monster unveils the dire consequences of his addiction. Teddy Lupus discovers Hayden's altered state, marking a tragic term in Hayden's life as he grapples with his newfound monstrous form. Bruce is falsely imprisoned as a suspect in Lucius Fox's attack, Later, as Batman investigates, he discovers Roland Daggett's plot to eliminate Fox and take over Wayne Enterprises. Meanwhile, Hagen, transformed into a clay monster, seeks revenge on Daggett. Luckily, Batman intervenes when Germs tries to kill Fox, extracting information about Hagen's identity. However, Hagen, now known as Clefus, attacks Batman and escapes. Clefus confronts Daggett during a TV appearance, but Batman intervenes, leading to a showdown where Clefus's uncontrollable transformations are exposed. Ultimately, Clefus appears to die, but Batman suspects it's another performance. As the authorities clear Bruce's name and arrest Daggett, Batman collects a sample of Clefus's clay. Meanwhile, Clefus's body disintegrates, 
but he survives, setting the stage for his return in future. In It's Never Too Late, Gotham crime boss Arnold Stromwell seeks vengeance for his missing son, suspecting rival Rupert Thorne. Batman in disguise overhears Thorne's plot to eliminate Stromwell. As Stromwell confronts Thorne, a bomb explodes, but Batman saves him. Encouraged by a priest, Batman urges Stromwell to change his ways. Batman takes Stromwell on a journey, revealing the consequences of his criminal actions, including his son's addiction. Stromwell agrees to testify against Thorne but betrays Batman. However, Thorne's attack forces them to flee. Returning to his childhood neighborhood, Stromwell confronts his past, reconciling with his estranged brother, Father Michael. Realizing the devastation he's caused, Stromwell decides to cooperate with the law. Thorne ambushes them, but Batman intervenes, allowing Stromwell to reconcile with his brother. With Thorne apprehended, if Stromwell prepares to confess his crimes, embracing a chance for redemption as Batman fades into the shadows. Charlie Collins finds himself indebted to the Joker after a chance encounter on the highway. Two years later, the Joker calls in his favor forcing Charlie to participate in a diabolical scheme at Commissioner Gordon's testimonial dinner. Desperate to escape, Charlie alerts Batman, who thwarts the Joker's plan and saves the guests from paralysis. As Batman confronts the Joker, Charlie bravely stands up to his tormentor, threatening to detonate a bomb to protect his family. Ultimately, the Joker surrenders valuable information in exchange for his safety, leading to his apprehension by Batman. With the Joker defeated, Charlie can finally return home to his family, relieved to leave behind the nightmare of his encounter with the clown prince of crime. Batman investigates rumors of a train heist orchestrated by Red Claw, a terrorist leader. Despite Batman's intervention, Red Claw obtains a deadly plague. Later, during a date with Selina Kyle, Bruce Wayne confronts thugs attempting to kill him. Bruce's concern for Selina prompts her to venture out as Catwoman to thwart Red Claw's plans. Batman discovers Catwoman's involvement and saves her from Red Claw's grasp. Together, they thwart Red Claw's scheme, destroying the plague and apprehending Red Claw. However, tensions rise as Batman confronts Catwoman about her criminal activities. Despite their burgeoning feelings, Batman arrests Catwoman, leading to a bittersweet resolution. Mayor Hill announces the groundbreaking for Stonegate Penitentiary, funded by Bruce Wayne's foundation. Five years later, an inmate escapes Stonegate, but Batman apprehends him. Meanwhile, Harvey Dent dines with Pamela Isley, his new girlfriend. Dent proposes to her, but soon falls into a coma from poisoning. Batman discovers Isley's involvement and confronts her as poison ivy in her greenhouse. Ivy traps Batman, but he bargains for the antidote with a rare plant. Batman escapes, saves Dent, and exposes Ivy. Dent recovers, realizing Isley isn't right for him. In prison, Ivy vows resilience, clutching the rose she saved from extinction. During a charity event at Gotham University, Bruce faces criticism from a professor, Dr. Long, who believes he has disgraced the Wayne name. As Batman, he interrupts a bank robbery by Scarecrow, who uses fear gas to incapacitate victims. Unfortunately, Batman's weakened state allows Scarecrow to escape. Furthermore, hallucinations of his father play Batman, but Alfred's reassurance strengthens him. Later, Scarecrow strikes again at a museum benefit, causing chaos with fear gas. This time, Batman confronts him in a dirigible, overcoming his own fears to defeat him. Crane is captured, proving Batman's innocence, and shortly afterwards, Bruce finds solace at his parents' grave. During a charity event, Mayor Hill boasts about a new building's safety. Batman stops criminals interrupting the speech, but Hill criticizes Batman, drawing Joker's attention. At Hill's son's birthday, Joker, disguised as a magician, plants a bomb. Bruce Wayne foils it, but Jordan, Hill's son, is missing. Bruce deduces Joker's identity and location. Joker mentors Jordan in a deadly prank on Batman. Batman saves Jordan from Joker's lethal trap. In a showdown in an amusement park, Batman rescues Jordan and defeats Joker, teaching Hill the importance of family. Jordan realizes Batman's approval and smiles, signaling his newfound courage. Roland Daddy plans to destroy Park Row with bombs. On the other hand, Batman, delayed by a crime, arrives late to meet Leslie Tompkins, who goes looking for him and discovers Daggett's scheme. To make matters worse, Batman is further delayed by stopping crimes and saving lives. With little time left, he confronts the criminals and defuses the bombs, ensuring no casualties. Daggett escapes, but he and Leslie commemorate the anniversary of Bruce's parents' death finding solace in each other's presence. Rene Montoya, Officer Wilkes, and Harvey Bullock respond to a fire at a warehouse, where they find Bullock injured and Batman aiding him. During an internal affairs interrogation, the officers recount conflicting versions of events, prompting suspicion. Montoya, suspended from duty, follows a lead alone and discovers Batman captured by criminals. She rescues him, and together they apprehend the thugs and uncover their boss's location. Despite acting without authorization, Montoya and her team are reinstated after resolving the case and recovering the stolen money. Temple Fugit's obsession with punctuality leads to his downfall after a courtroom incident. Seven years later, he resurfaces as the Clock King, wreaking havoc on Gotham City to exact revenge on those he perceives as responsible for his misfortune. Batman races against time to stop Fugit's deadly schemes, ultimately saving Mayor Hamilton Hill from a perilous fate atop the Gotham Clock Tower. Though Fugit appears to vanish in the chaos, Batman anticipates his return, 
knowing that the Clock King's obsession with time will inevitably resurface. On April Fool's Day in Gotham, the Joker unleashes a gas that induces uncontrollable laughter, plunging the city into chaos. Batman confronts the Joker and his robotic henchmen aboard a barge, engaging in a fierce battle to end their evil plans. Despite facing formidable adversaries, Batman emerges victorious, dismantling the Joker's schemes and restoring order to the city. As Gotham begins to recover from the mayhem, Bruce Wayne and Alfred share a moment of levity, finding humor amidst the chaos. Through Batman's unwavering determination and resourcefulness, he once again proves to be the sea's beacon of hope. In Gotham, a woman fleeing from a girl is eventually caught by Poison Ivy, who turns her into a statue with a paralyzing gas. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne receives an invitation to the Eternal Youth Spa, but sends Alfred and Maggie Page in his place. At the spa, Ivy, disguised as Dr. Demeter, introduces a serum promising Eternal Youth, actually turning people into plants. Batman investigates after Alfred starts acting strangely and discovers Ivy's plan. Ivy captures Alfred and Maggie, attempting to turn Batman into a tree. However, Batman reveals he's immune and defeats Ivy, inadvertently causing a tree to destroy her hideout. Ivy's victims are saved, and Alfred and Maggie recover in the hospital, surprised when Bruce arrives with Flowers. Harvey Dent grapples with his inner demons as his alter ego, Big Bad Harv, resurfaces during moments of intense stress. Despite his efforts to suppress this darker side, Dent's violent outbursts threaten his career and personal life. With the looming threat of his alter ego being exposed by Rupert Thorne, Dent's world spirals further out of control. However, when Thorne's confrontation leads to a catastrophic accident at an abandoned chemical plant, Dent's fate is sealed. Gravely injured and scarred, Dent emerges from the wreckage as the villainous Two-Face, his psyche fractured and his appearance forever altered. As Dent's transformation into Two-Face becomes complete, the once promising district attorney descends into the shadows of Gotham City, consumed by his dual nature and thirst for revenge. In his new persona as Two-Face, Harvey Dent unleashes a reign of chaos, guided by the flip of his iconic coin. Targeting Rupert Thorne's criminal empire, Two-Face and his henchmen strike fear into the heart of Gotham. However, Dent's inner turmoil continues to torment him, especially when memories of Grace Lament resurface. As Batman races to stop Two-Face's vendetta, he grapples with his own injuries and personal demons. Grace Lament becomes unwittingly entangled in the conflict, torn between her love for Dent and the danger he poses as Two-Face. When Thorne captures Grace, Dent's allegiance is tested, leading to a climactic showdown where alliances blur and loyalties are questioned. Ultimately, Batman's intervention saves the day, but Dent's fate hangs in the balance as he struggles to reconcile this fractured identity. With Thorne defeated and justice served, Batman reflects on Dent's tragic descent, holding onto a flicker of hope for his friend's redemption. As he tosses a coin to the fountain, Batman silently wishes for Harvey's salvation, knowing that amidst the darkness of Gotham, Love remains a beacon of light. Dick Grayson and his friend Brian Rogers find themselves embroiled in a sinister plot orchestrated by the Scarecrow, who's using a modified fear toxin to induce panic attacks in athletes and others. Batman and Robin intervene, but not before Dick experiences his own terrifying moment of fear while on patrol. Batman's investigation leads him to Arkham Asylum, but the Scarecrow is already full of it, leaving behind a decoy in his cell. Meanwhile, the Scarecrow, disguised as Lucky, lures unsuspecting victims into his grasp, using their own fears against them. As the Scarecrow scheme escalates, Batman and Robin race to stop him at a high-profile sports event. Robin, so grappling with his own fears, confronts the Scarecrow head-on, ultimately overcoming his doubts to save the day. With the Scarecrow apprehended and the fear toxin threat neutralized, Gotham can breathe a sigh of relief. As Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson relax at Wayne Manor, they reflect on the day's events, knowing that they have once again triumphed over the forces of fear, and darkness. It's a typical night in Gotham City, but this time, crime takes an unexpected turn when Batman faces off against thugs attempting to steal the Vonlster Faberge egg. Before he can stop them, a giant South American vulture swoops in, distracting Batman and allowing the thugs to escape. All that's left behind is a clue, birdseed. Meanwhile, in the suburbs, two children, Sherman and Roberta, stumble upon the scene with their junior detective kit. They witness the Penguin and his henchmen at the abandoned Bird Sea factory demanding the egg. As they try to alert the authorities, Penguin's vulture, Scrap, spots them. Batman intervenes, but Gas Pellet weakens him, leading the kids to rush him to safety in the Batmobile. A wild chase ensues, with the kids driving and evading the criminals. Back at Sherman's basement, Batman manages to communicate a cryptic message about capsules. The kids discover capsules hidden in the Batmobile realizing they hold the antidote to Batman's weakness. When Penguin and his men track them down, the kids use traps and gadgets to delay them. Eventually, Batman regains his strength and defeats the villains. Mrs. Grant arrives to find her house in disarray, but is grateful for Batman's help. Later, Sherman proudly hangs up articles about Penguin's capture, while the respect of his peers grows as they form their own junior detective agency. When a police ship is sabotaged, Batman uncovers a toothpick belonging to Officer Harvey Bullock, casting suspicion on him. Investigating further, Batman finds a reptilian scale at the scene, hinting at a creature 
creature lurking underwater. With Alfred's casual dinner reminder triggering a realization, Batman confronts Killer Croc, who has kidnapped prisoners to frame Bullock. In a showdown in the sewers, Batman defeats Croc and clears Bullock's name. Grateful. Bullock reconciles with Batman. As Croc and other criminals are apprehended, Bullock reassures the public while Batman keeps a watchful eye over Gotham. A ritzy casino boat sinks with a bomb on board, triggering talk of fortune-telling abilities. Bruce Wayne hears about Nostromos, a so-called seer, and attends a party in his honor. Batman uncovers Nostromos' tricks and links him to actor Carl Fowler and special effects expert Lucas. When a sabotage attempt nearly kills Bruce, Batman chases Lucas but loses him. Nostromos plans Bruce's demise but Bruce pretends to believe in him. The Brotherhood plots to steal a trust fund but Lisa, Ethan's daughter, discovers their scheme. Batman intervenes, defeating Lucas and saving Lisa from Nostromo's deadly traps. With the villains apprehended, Bruce reflects on human folly. Bruce Wayne volunteers at a soup kitchen and learns of disappearances, prompting him to investigate as Gaff Morgan. Captured and sent to a remote desert mine, Gaff befriends two hostages. Alfred tracks Bruce and rescues him as Batman, defeating the captors. Gaff recalls his identity, aiding his escape and saving Riley and Smith. Batman confronts the boss, leading to a mine explosion. Reuniting with Alfred, Bruce offers help to his rescued friends. As they part ways, Bruce reflects on his journey, leaving Smith with a jest about amnesia and fortune. Jervis Tech, a scientist at Wayne Enterprises, develops a mind control technology. Infatuated with his secretary, Alice, he resorts to controlling her emotion. When Alice reconciles with her boyfriend, Billy, Tech manipulates events to separate them. Using mind control cards, he poses as the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland, manipulating Gotham's residents. Batman intervenes, uncovering Tech's involvement and confronting him. Tech captures Alice, leading Batman to a showdown in a Wonderland themed maze. Batman defeats Tech freeing Alice and destroying the mind control device. Alice reunites with Billy, while Tetch faces justice. A man follows mysterious instructions to a golf course, where he's ensnared by quicksand by the interrogator Jojo Wormwood. Batman investigates, interrogating Wormwood's associate, Baron Wacklaw Josick, who's coerced into luring Batman into Wormwood's traps. Wormwood orchestrates traps involving trains and wax museums to obtain Batman's cape and cowl. Batman, using a decoy, outwits Wormwood, who confesses his crimes. Batman apprehends Wormwood, who receives a package in prison containing Batman's cape and cowl. Batman pursues criminals into a warehouse, fallen victim to a trap set by Jervis Tetch the Mad Hatter. Awakening in a dream where his deceased parents are alive, Bruce grapples with his altered reality. Consulting with Selina Kyle and Dr. Leslie Thompkins, Bruce struggles to distinguish dream from reality, eventually confirming Batman, who is revealed to be the Mad Hatter. Bruce deliberately jumps from a bell tower to escape the dream, waking back in the warehouse. Tetch is apprehended, but Batman is left haunted by the loss of his dream life. In the heart of Gotham, two boys tempt fate atop a speeding train, playing a dangerous game of chicken with a tunnel. Batman intervenes just in time to save one boy, cautioning them against such reckless behavior. Meanwhile, a wealthy woman falls victim to a young thief dressed as a leprechaun, prompting Batman to investigate. Descending into the depths of the city's theater district, Batman discovers a hidden underworld where children toil under the oppressive rule of the sewer king. Forced into a life of crime, the children live in fear their every move monitored by their tyrannical ruler. As he delves deeper into the Sewer King's domain, he uncovers the extent of the children's suffering and resolves to put an end to their exploitation. With the help of a courageous boy named Frog, Batman confronts the Sewer King and his vicious alligators in a harrowing showdown. Despite the Sewer King's attempts to thwart him, he emerges victorious, rescuing the children and bringing the Sewer King to justice. With the children freed from their tormentor's grasp, Batman watches over them as they are taken into the care of social workers, knowing that he has made a difference in their lives. The mystery of the ninja attacking Wayne Enterprises unravels as Batman confronts his old rival, Kyodai Ken. With the help of Robin, Batman manages to thwart Kyodai's plans and rescue Summer Gleason, who had been kidnapped by the skilled martial artist. As the dust settles, Bruce Wayne reflects on his past encounters with Kaidai Ken and acknowledges Dick Grayson's invaluable assistance in their recent confrontation. With Kaidai seemingly defeated once again, Bruce expresses gratitude to Dick for his quick thinking during the final showdown. With the threat neutralized and Wayne Enterprises safe once more, Bruce, Dick, and Alfred enjoy a peaceful morning together, grateful for their shared victory over adversity. Batman orchestrates a complex plan to thwart Hugo Strange's scheme of auctioning off a videotape containing Batman's secret identity to Gotham's most notorious criminals. With the help of Alfred and Dick Grayson, he manages to outmaneuver Strange and the villains, ultimately exposing Strange's deception and securing his arrest by the GCPD. With the crisis averted, Bruce resumes his duties in Gotham, grateful for the support of his trusted allies in combating the city's criminal underworld. Selina Kyle, known as Catwoman, is kidnapped by Dr. Emil Dorian, who experiments on her, transforming her into a cat-like creature. Batman investigates, learning Dorian's compound is responsible. He confronts Dorian on his island where Selina is held. Dorian offers Batman an antidote if he survives a hunt with Tigris, another experiment. Batman and Tigris clash but reconcile when Selina convinces Tigris of Dorian's treachery. Tigris sacrifices himself to save Selina and Batman 
leaving them the antidote. Selena chooses to return to human form, bidding farewell to Tigris. As they depart, Selena vows to honor Tigris' memory while he finds solace in his solitude, having left a legacy of compassion. Locked in Arkham Asylum after exposure to a fear-inducing gas, Batman battles hallucinations while warning of Scarecrow's plot to poison Gotham's water supply. Ignored by doctors, he escapes, encountering terrifying visions until he confronts Scarecrow in the cavern below. Overcoming his fears, Batman thwarts the scheme, but not before enduring intense illusions. Returned to safety, Bruce Wayne finds solace in sleep, protected by his sanctuary. As he dreams, a bat's shadow envelops him, symbolizing his resilience against darkness. Scarecrow is subdued, confirming Batman's warnings, and Gotham remains safe, testament to the caped crusader's unyielding determination. Years after watching his favorite childhood show, the Grey Ghost, Bruce Wayne, now Batman, seeks the help of the actor who portrayed the hero, Simon Trent, to solve a string of bombings echoing an episode from the series. Initially reluctant, Trent eventually assists Batman by providing him with the missing episode. Together, they destroy the Mad Bomber's plot, revealing a toy collector, Ted, as the culprit. Trent, donning his Grey Ghost costume, aids Batman in capturing Ted, reigniting his fame and career. As a token of gratitude, Batman shares his childhood admiration for the Grey Ghost with Trent, forging a bond between the two heroes, while Trent subtly acknowledges Bruce's true identity. Selina Kyle, the Catwoman, stands trial but is sentenced to probation for her past crimes due to her aid in saving Gotham City. Bruce, suspecting her continued Catwoman activities, bails her out. Later, Selina searches for her missing cat, Isis, leading her to an encounter with thugs from Daggett Industries. Batman saves her, but she's later infected with a virus by Dr. Milo during an animal rescue at Daggett's labs. Batman aids her recovery and uncovers Daggett's sinister plans. After defeating Daggett and Milo, Selina finds Isis safe, seemingly cured. As Selina reunites with her pet, she spots Batman watching over them from afar. On the anniversary of his parents' death, Batman feels weary and futile, confiding in Leslie Thompkins. They intervene in a street scuffle, sparing a young criminal. Batman later joins a police raid but fails to prevent Commissioner Gordon's injury. Laving himself, Bruce retreats to the Batcave, consumed by guilt. Meanwhile, Jasmine escapes prison seeking Gordon's demise. Dick Grayson urges Bruce to act, but Bruce resolves to vanish as Batman. When Jasmine threatens Gordon, Batman intervenes, saving him and restoring his faith in his mission. Encountering the reformed young man from earlier, Batman sees the impact of his actions, renewing his resolve to continue fighting for justice. In a dimly lit club, iconic villains gather for poker. Poison Ivy recounts her Halloween encounter with Batman in a pumpkin patch. Two-Face shares how he nearly crushed Batman with a giant penny but failed. Killer Croc's tale is brief. He threw a big rock at Batman. Penguin's scheme involved poisonous hummingbirds, thwarted by Batman's quick thinking. Joker's story involves an electric chair and Catwoman's capture. As Joker reveals Catwoman's peril, Batman reveals his disguise, leading to their capture. Batman rushes to save Catwoman from Harley Quinn at a cat food processing plant. Forced to choose, Batman saves Catwoman, capturing Harley. On the rooftop, Catwoman expresses gratitude and Batman leaves while she muses, almost got I'm. Batman saves zoo guard John Hammer from a werewolf attack later realizing Hammer works at the zoo where wolves were stolen. Investigating, Batman finds hair on his suit, suggesting the werewolf might not be wearing a mask. Meanwhile, at a construction site, a chills Milo awaits the werewolf, Anthony Romulus, who seeks an antidote for his condition. Romulus plans to donate to Batman, luring him into a trap. Batman falls victim to a gas trap, losing his utility belt. Romulus and Milo intend to use the werewolf to kill Batman. Harvey Bullock interrogates Hammer about the stolen wolves. At night, Romulus transforms into the werewolf and attacks Milo. Batman regains consciousness and battles the werewolf at the construction site. Bullock and the police arrive, witnessing Batman's fight. Batman electrocutes the werewolf, causing it to fall into the river. Bullock speculates on the werewolf's fate. The GCP arrests Milo and Romulus's whereabouts remain unknown. Later, a wolf howls in the woods, hinting at Romulus's fate. In the chilly Gotham night, dock workers face a bat-like assailant, later revealed as Man-Bat. Kirk Langstrom, played by Disturbing Dreams, discovers shredded fruit and carpet, hinting at his alter ego's return. Batman suspects Kirk's involvement and investigates while Kirk, striving for a cure, isolates himself from his wife Francine. Batman collects a blood sample, but Man-Bat attacks, injuring Batman and escaping. Analyzing bat hair on his suit, Batman concludes Kirk's innocence. Meanwhile, Francine vanishes, prompting Kirk's concern. Batman confronts Dr. March, suspecting his involvement. On a plane, Francine transforms into Man-Bat, 
endangering the flight. Kirk and Batman intervene, with Batman administering an antidote to Francine atop Gotham Bridge. Despite Batman's injuries, Kirk saves Francine, ending the nightmare. On Christmas Eve, Joker escapes Arkham using a Christmas tree rocket. Meanwhile, at Wayne Manor, Bruce and Dick bet that if no crime occurs, they'll watch a movie. They almost return home, but find Joker's prorated broadcast, Christmas with the Joker. Joker threatens hostages and plans train destruction. Batman saves the train, but loses track of the broadcast location. Discovering it's at a toy factory, Batman and Robin face Joker's traps. They rescue hostages from molten plastic and capture Joker. Later, Bruce and Dick enjoy It's a Wonderful Life. Joker, back in Arkham, laughs maniacally, concluding a chaotic Christmas in Gotham, he sings along with Tis the Season to be Jolly. Bruce Wayne encounters a mysterious woman who plants a robotic briefcase at Wayne Enterprises, stealing vital technology. Investigating as Batman, he discovers the woman is an android created by Carl Rossum's AI. HRDAC, the AI seeking to replace humanity, manipulates events using android duplicates. Batman confronts HARDAC at Rossum's lab battling through androids to disable the rogue AI with Rossum's help. With the threat thwarted, Batman reflects on the dangers of AI gone wrong. Amidst chaos in the Batcave, Batman and Alfred work to thwart HARDAC's cybernetic grip on the city. Meanwhile, Barbara Gordon grows suspicious of her father's odd behavior and begins her own investigation. At Cybertron, Carl Rossum faces off against his creation, but is incapacitated. Elsewhere, the real Commissioner Gordon is replaced by a robotic duplicate, wreaking havoc at City Hall. As Batman and Barbara collaborate to uncover the truth, they encounter deadly robot clones, with Randa Duane revealed as the mastermind. In a climactic showdown at Cybertron, Batman rescues the hostages and defeats HARDAC, while Barbara proves her courage. With the threat neutralized, Gotham City is safe once more, and both Batman and Barbara emerge unscathed, though deeply changed by the ordeal. Edward Nigma's downfall after being fired from Competitron culminates in a grand scheme to extract revenge on his former boss, Daniel Mockridge. Mockridge's encounter with Nigma, now the Riddler, at the Wasteland Bar leads to a tense standoff where Batman and Robin intervene. Despite their efforts to stop the Riddler, Mockridge is kidnapped, setting off a dangerous game of cat and mouse across Gotham City. Using his intellect and cunning, the Riddler leads Batman and Robin on a twisted journey through the Riddler of the Minotaur Amusement Park, filled with deadly traps and puzzles reminiscent of his infamous game. Batman and Robin must navigate the maze-like challenges while racing against time to save Mockridge and thwart the Riddler's plans. In a climactic showdown, Batman and Robin defeat the Riddler and rescue Mockridge from his clutches. However, the Riddler manages to escape once again, leaving Mockridge to grapple with the consequences of his actions. As Wing Enterprises absorbs Competitron, Dick Grayson remains resentful of Mockridge's ill-gotten gains, while Bruce Wayne reflects on the lingering threat posed by the Riddler. Meanwhile, Mockridge is haunted by guilt and paranoia. Unable to find peace in the wake of his encounter with the masked vigilant and his nemesis, the chaos at Arkham Asylum leads to a surprising turn of events when Joker's antics inadvertently reveal a scheme by Cameron Kaiser to profit from the destruction of his own casino. Bruce Wayne's suspicions are confirmed as Batman uncovers Kaiser's plot to bankrupt himself with the Camelot Casino before orchestrating Joker's involvement to destroy it and collect insurance money. As Batman confronts Kaiser, Joker's initial plan to destroy the casino takes a backseat to a newfound desire for revenge against Kaiser himself. Despite his initial reluctance, Joker ultimately decides to spare Batman and chase down Kaiser, opting to take control of the casino instead. A dramatic showdown ensues as Batman, Joker, and Kaiser clash in a helicopter above the casino. In a fierce battle, Batman manages to thwart Joker's plans and apprehend both him and Kaiser, putting an end to their criminal schemes. The news of their arrests brings closure to the ordeal, with Summer Gleason reporting on the exposure of Kaiser's insurance fraud and the arrest of both villains. Back at Arkham, Joker's attempt to change the channel is thwarted by his fellow inmates, signaling a temporary victory for justice and order in Gotham City. In a warehouse raid, thieves encounter a Batman imposter with robotic internals, prompting the real Batman's investigation. The imposter seeks refuge at Wayne Manor, incapacitating Alfred before fleeing. Batman confronts Carl Rossum, encountering the duplicate again. The duplicate integrates HARDAC's remnants, leading to a final battle where Batman appeals to his humanity. The duplicate sacrifices himself to destroy HARDAC, staving Batman. Reflecting on the duplicate's selflessness, Batman and Alfred contemplate his nature. Batman interrogates Twitch atop the Statue of Justice about the Society of Shadows. Assassins arrive, attacking Batman and Twitch. Batman defeats them, but one assassin throws Twitch into the river. Batman visits Commissioner Gordon, suspecting a society attack on a Wayne Enterprises shipment. Vertigo disrupts Bullock's guard, stealing a device. Batman confronts Vertigo, but both are affected by Vertigo waves. Talia saves Batman, and they're captured in a cathedral rigged with Vertigo devices. Batman and Talia navigate traps, confronting Vertigo. Talia's trick disorients Vertigo, allowing Batman to defeat him and save them. Talia betrays Batman, but he sabotages 
damages the device she takes. Talia's father, watching, acknowledges Batman's prowess and vows to continue their conflict. Gotham City faces a cyber attack by the Riddler, who erases his records and leaves riddles. Batman and Gordon identify the hacker as Edward Nigma. Riddler sends a puzzle-filled crate to the GCPD, distracting Batman and Robin while his men tamper with Nigma's files. Robin discovers a VR simulator in the crate, which Riddler hijacks to trap Gordon's mind. Batman enters the virtual world to save Gordon, solving Riddler's challenges. In the final showdown, Batman outwits Riddler by manipulating the virtual environment. They rescue Gordon, but Riddler's mind remains trapped. Batman deduces Riddler's location, finding him at the abandoned Gotham World's fair. Unable to escape his virtual prison, Riddler is apprehended, ending his cyber rampage. In a peculiar scheme, Joker contaminates Gotham's fish with his trademark grin, baffling everyone. Batman investigates, discovering the toxin is harmless to humans. Joker's real plan is to copyright the fish, but he's denied by copyright authorities. Frustrated, he attempts to kill the official, prompting Batman's intervention. Joker announces his intent to murder another target, evading Batman and the police. Harvey Bullock takes matters into his own hands and confronts Joker, only to be captured. Batman rescues Bullock, leading to a showdown at the aquarium. Joker's henchmen fall into a shark tank, while Batman subdues Joker. In a desperate escape, Joker faces the unleashed shark and disappears into the sea. Despite apprehending Joker's gang, Batman doubts Joker's demise as the shark ominously resurfaces without the clown prince. Harley Quinn and the Joker lead Batman on a chase through Gotham, but their antics end in chaos. Furious with Harley's incompetence, Joker kicks her out, prompting her to pursue her own heist, stealing the Harlequin diamond with Poison Ivy's help. Ivy administers a toxin immunity vaccine to Harley, and the dew becomes known as the new queens of crime. Batman investigates their crimes and traces them to a toxic environment, leading to a confrontation where Batman is captured and dropped into a chemical waste pit. Meanwhile, Joker arrives at Ivy's hideout but is subdued by Ivy's immunity to his laughing gas. Batman saves Joker from the exploding hideout and apprehends him, while Harley and Ivy are arrested by Officer Montoya. In Arkham, Joker vows never to work with women again, while Harley remains hopeful about her relationship with him. After a high-speed chase, Penguin's henchmen damage the Batmobile, leading Batman to get it repaired by Earl Cooper. Penguin learns about the Batmobile's repairs and kidnaps Earl's daughter, coercing Earl into sabotaging the vehicle. Batman and Robin collect the Batmobile and narrowly escape Penguin's trap. Thanks to Earl's subtle warning about the air conditioner switch. Penguin gains control of the Batmobile remotely and drives it recklessly, causing it to crash at Gotham Airport. Earl believes Batman and Robin have perished in the explosion. However, Batman and Robin survive using bat gliders and pursue Penguin, ultimately apprehending him and rescuing Marva. Batman assures Earl of a better future, while Penguin is imprisoned. Earl moves to a safer location, vowing to create an even better Batmobile. Meanwhile, in prison, Penguin encounters a license plate with a taunting message from Batman, further fueling his rage. On a stormy night, Sid the Squid rushes to Rupert Thorne's office, seeking help to flee Gotham. Thorne agrees, but only if Sid confirms he killed Batman. Sid recounts his involvement in a drug operation and a confrontation with Batman, where Sid accidentally caused Batman's apparent demise. Celebrated as the Squid, Sid is challenged to a brawl in a pub, leading to his arrest. Lawyer Harleen Quinzel, secretly Harley Quinn, bails him out, delivering him to Joker. Joker's plan to ambush Batman fails, and Sid finds himself in a coffin heading towards Acid, but miraculously escapes. Sid's revelation to Thorne that he's not a killer prompts Thorne's attempt on his life, foiled by Batman. Batman reveals Sid's involvement in the drug racket, but spares him from prison. In prison, Sid gains notoriety, content with his newfound status. In a mesmerizing magic show, Zatanna stuns the audience with her illusions, including making a bank disappear. When the money inside vanishes too, suspicion falls on her. Bruce Wayne, recalling his training days was a tennis father aids her. They uncover evidence suggesting another magician's involvement. Confronting Monte Kane, they're ensnared in a deadly trap but escape, with Batman's ingenuity saving them. Battling Kane's henchmen on a plane, they thwart his plans and deliver him to the police. Is this Anna bids farewell, leaving Batman with a nostalgic note? Robin, learning that Billy Moran is actually Tony Zuko, the man who killed his parents, recalls the tragic events at Haley's Circus. Furious, he confronts Batman, who remembers his own past failures in capturing Zuko. Batman had previously tracked Zuko to Arnold Stromwell's house, but was thwarted. Despite Robin's desire for justice, Batman refuses to involve him, prompting Robin to take matters into his own hands. Determined to confront Zuko alone, Robin prepares to confront his parents' killer, defying Batman's wishes. Penguin is released from custody, but finds finds himself alone and ignored by his associates. Veronica of Reland, seeking excitement, invites him to her party, where he impresses her with his bravery during an attack. However, she and her friend Pierce mock him behind his back. Penguin, hurt, kidnaps Veronica for ransom. Batman intervenes, rescuing Veronica and apprehending Penguin. Later, Pierce faces consequences for his role in the ordeal, while Veronica expresses regret for her actions. Penguin, bitter but resigned, blames society for his downfall as he is taken back into custody by the police. Robin, determined to find Tony Zuko, recalls his childhood quest to locate him. 
Despite Batman's attempts to keep him out of danger, Robin tracks Zuko using a tracking device. Zuko, aware of Batman's pursuit, prepares for a confrontation. Injured Batman evades Zuko's men in an abandoned amusement park until Robin arrives, aiding Batman in defeating them. Fueled by anger, Robin nearly exacts revenge on Zuko before Batman intervenes. Robin realizes Batman's concern for his safety and acknowledges his mistake in defying him. Together, they apprehend Zuko and Robin learns the depth of Batman's protective instincts. They reconcile, understanding each other's perspectives, and return home as the sun rises, their bond strengthened by their shared experiences. During a Wayne Enterprises presentation of the Raven X-111 helicopter, chaos erupts when it's hijacked by Penguin. Bruce Wayne, injured in the attack, conceals his blindness caused by the explosion to prevent revealing his secret identity. With Batman incapacitated, Penguin threatens Gotham with destruction unless a ransom is paid. Bruce, aided by Alfred and Leslie, develops a helmet using Raven technology to regain limited sight. Batman confronts Penguin, leading to a showdown where his helmet malfunctions. Despite his blindness, Batman relies on instinct to defeat Penguin and save Gotham. Days later, Bruce reveals his regained sight, ensuring Penguin's capture and Gotham's safety. In Japan, Batman aids Master Yoru in rescuing Kari Tamaga, kidnapped by Kodai Ken for a scroll, revealing a deadly martial arts technique. During the exchange, Kari falls, but Batman saves her, allowing Ken to escape with the map to the hidden scroll. Ken finds the scroll's location and retrieves a fragment before Batman arrives, retrieving the rest. They learn the fragment holds a lethal technique. Ken later kidnaps Alfred, forcing Batman to confront him at Mount Kakiki. In a fierce battle, Ken seemingly kills Batman with a fatal touch, but Batman reveals he survived using armor. As the volcano erupts, Batman defeats Ken, who chooses to fall into the lava rather than accept help. Batman saves Alfred and later bids farewell to Master Yoru. In a Gotham suburb, young Kimmy converses with her invisible friend Mojo, who gives her a locket. Meanwhile, Lloyd Ventrix, a man driven by desperation to win back his family, turns invisible using a stolen technology. He robs a jewelry expo, but is confronted by Batman, escaping after a brutal fight. Ventrix, seeking reconciliation with his ex-wife Helen and daughter Kimmy, confronts Helen, but is rejected. Batman investigates the technology's origins, leading him to Ventrix's connection to a scientist's invention. Batman learns that Ventrix, using the invisibility, plans to abduct Kimmy. He intervenes, saving Kimmy and defeating Ventrix after a dramatic battle. As Kimmy mentions speaking with Batman, unaware he's actually present, Helen remains skeptical, unaware of Batman's vigil from afar. Batman and Robin work together to free Talia from Raz's grip. In the struggle, Raz loses his balance and falls into the Lazarus pit, disappearing into the depths. Talia is distraught but grateful to Batman for his efforts. As they leave the lair, Talia expresses her conflicted feelings for both her father and Batman. Batman assures her that Ra's actions were his own, and they part ways on amicable terms. Back in Gotham, Batman reflects on the encounter with Ra's and the complexity of his relationship with Talia. He reaffirms his commitment to his mission and to protecting Gotham from threats like Ra's and his Society of Shadows. Meanwhile, Alfred and Dick anxiously await Bruce's return, relieved when they see the bat signal light up the night sky, signaling Batman's presence in the city once again. In the Batcave, Batman and Robin discuss the events in Calcutta and the danger posed by Ra's al Ghul. They vow to remain vigilant against any future schemes from Ra's or his associates. As they prepare for their next patrol, Batman reminds Robin of the importance of trust and teamwork in their partnership, knowing that together they can overcome any challenge that comes their way. With a renewed sense of purpose, Batman and Robin head out into the night, ready to continue their fight against crime in Gotham City. As Batman and Robin fly away from the desert fortress, they can't shake the feeling of unease caused by Ra's al Ghul's evil laughter echoing in their minds. Back in Gotham, they debrief Alfred about their encounter with Raz and the narrow escape from his apocalyptic plan. Alfred expresses relief that Batman and Robin are safe, but his concern remains palpable. Meanwhile, Talia stands amidst the ruins of her father's fortress, grappling with conflicting emotions. She mourns the loss of Raz and the destruction of her home, yet she also feels a sense of liberation from his extremist ideology. With a heavy heart, she sets off into the desert, uncertain of her future but determined to forge her own path. In the Batcave, Batman reflects on the events in the desert and the complexity of his relationship with Talia. He acknowledges the allure of her companionship, but recognizes the potential dangers of getting too close to someone with ties to Raz al -Akul. Nevertheless, he can't deny the connection they share, and he wonders what the future holds for them. Batman investigates a crime wave orchestrated by a gang led by Scarface, a ventriloquist's dummy controlled by Arnold Wesker. Using his skills and resources, the Dark Knight tracks the gang's activities and confronts them, ultimately defeating Scarface. Wesker is sent to Arkham Asylum, seemingly recovering until he secretly carves a new Scarface dummy, indicating his ongoing struggle with his criminal alter ego. Commissioner Gordon waits for a meeting, but finds a man attacked by a lightning-wielding thug. Batman investigates linking the attack to a missing weapon from Maximilian shipping lines. At the company's temple-like headquarters, owner Maximilian Zeus believes himself a deity. Batman confronts Zeus, seeking answers about the weapon. 
Cleo's Zeus's associate aids Batman after realizing his delusion. Batman scales Zeus's traps to reach him, saving Cleo from Zeus's attempt to make her a goddess. In the final showdown, Batman defeats Zeus, causing him to electrocute himself. Zeus is institutionalized, believing Arkham Asylum to be Olympus surrounded by imagined gods. Thorne's midnight operation is foiled by Batman, leading to anonymous tips aiding police. Deputy Commissioner Mason arrests Commissioner Gordon for bribery, but Barbara seeks evidence to prove his innocence. Batman investigates, finding forged documents framing Gordon. Barbara, determined to help, disguises herself as Batman at a rally. Robin unexpectedly sees her, and they thwart an attack filmed by Summer Gleason. Dick suspects Mason's involvement after seeing him dodge gunfire. Barbara discovers Mason meeting with a thug, leading her to investigate further. Matches Malone trails the thug to a booby trap building, getting knocked out. Meanwhile, Barbara, inspired by Batman's absence, becomes Batgirl to fight crime while Malone faces Two-Face's judgment. Robin suspects Deputy Commissioner Mason's involvement in Commissioner Gordon's arrest and investigates. Batgirl also tracks Mason and reads his address. They both arrive at an abandoned subway entrance, where Two-Face and Mason meet. Batman, disguised as matches Malone, warns Robin and Batgirl of danger. Shootout ensues, and Two-Face collapses the entrance to trap them. Batman, Robin, and Batgirl escape as the subway floods. Meanwhile, thugs break Gordon out of jail on Two-Face's orders. At the Bayshore Wharf, Batgirl saves Gordon from Mason's assassination attempt. Batman and Robin arrive to defeat Two-Face. Batgirl confronts Mason, leading to a struggle on a boat that crashes. Mason is left in a coma, and Gordon is cleared of all charges. Barbara hints at Batgirl's continued presence in Gotham, leaving Bruce and Dick hopeful. A security guard at the Tarnower building activates a silent alarm when he sees a man identical to him entering the building. Batman arrives and confronts Clayfus, who had disguised himself as the guard. During the scuffle, Clayfus escapes but is weakened in dripping mud. A woman named Stella Bates rescues Clayfus and takes him to her lab, where she encases him in a protective coating. Batman deduces Clayfus's deteriorating molecular structure and links him to Stella, suspecting her involvement due to Clayfus's need for expensive treatments. Meanwhile, Stella watches old movies starring Clayfus injuring him. She proposes using a rare isotope to restore his powers, leading Clayfus to steal it from Wayne Biomedical Labs. Batman confronts Clayfus, but he escapes by jumping from a moving train. With Alfred's help, Batman connects Stella to the movie and realizes her connection to Clayfus. He interrupts the isotope process, triggering Clayfus's rage. Clayfus absorbs Batman, intending to suffocate him, but Batman escapes and defeats Clayfus in a final showdown during a storm. Clayface dissolves and seemingly perishes, leaving Stella distraught. Veronica Vreeland hosts a party where she gives her guests dolls from her Central American trip. Bruce Wayne, skeptical, accepts one. Later, Batman encounters a tribal-clad thief at the party, foiling his robbery attempt. The thief escapes, but triggers a falling ticky mask, which Batman stops from crushing the guests. The next day, Bruce finds the worry doll from Veronica and learns about similar thefts targeting party guests. He investigates, leading him to Veronica's yacht, where he discovers stolen jewels. Tribesmen attack, but Batman saves Veronica and retrieves the stolen goods. Analysis of the dolls reveals mind control chips implicating the Mad Hatter. Batman confronts the Mad Hatter at his hideout, where the villain reveals his plan to retire after controlling Gotham's elite. The captured Batman disrupts the mind control and turns the henchman against Hatter. In the ensuing chaos, Batman defeats the Mad Hatter, who is arrested. Later, it's revealed the Mad Hatter received a souvenir from the tribal shaman, a worry doll causing him sleepless nights in Arkham. An armored car is attacked and Batman intervenes, leading to a scuffle where he's knocked unconscious and left hanging off a bridge. Meanwhile, at a secret medical seminar, Rupert Thorne provides a stolen device to his brother, Matthew, who is a disgraced doctor. Rupert collapses from a heart attack, prompting Matthew to seek help from Leslie Tompkins, another doctor. Leslie reluctantly agrees to operate on Rupert, under duress from Rupert's men. Batman, recovering from his injuries, investigates Leslie's disappearance and connects it to Rupert Thorne. With Alfred's help, Bruce deduces Leslie's location and rushes to the medical center. Batman arrives in time to thwart Rupert's men and save Leslie and Matthew from danger. Matthew sacrifices himself to save Leslie, and Batman promises to help clear his name and restore his medical license in exchange for information about his father, Thomas Wayne. Moved by the request, Matthew agrees to cooperate. A green monster terrorizes Gotham City, leading Batman to suspect Poison Ivy's involvement despite her recent rehabilitation. When Batman investigates Ivy, he finds her living a seemingly normal life with her new family. However, events take a dark turn when Dick Grayson is kidnapped by the monster. Batman is then targeted for ransom, prompting him to confront Ivy again. 
Despite his suspicions, Batman realizes Ivy is innocent. Later, the monster demands a ransom from Bruce Wayne for Dick's release, leading Batman to confront it and rescue Dick. Together, they uncover Ivy's true plan, creating plant-based creatures using DNA from her husband, Steven. These creatures, resembling children, eventually transform into the green monsters terrorizing Gotham. In a final showdown, Batman defeats Ivy's creations with Weed Killer, ultimately leading to Ivy's demise. The truth behind Ivy's scheme is revealed, she sought a family but could only create replicas of herself and Steven, leading to a tragic outcome. As Ivy's creatures perish, she escapes, leaving Gotham behind. Despite the ordeal, Batman believes Ivy won't return, having lost her chance at true happiness. Meanwhile, Ivy reflects on her actions, shedding a tear for her lost family as she departs from Gotham. After a daring escape, Killer Croc finds refuge with a group of outcasts, while Batman pursues him. Croc's bond with his new companions is shattered when he turns on them to kill Batman. In a final showdown atop a watermill, Batman defeats Croc, who is taken into custody by the police. Reflecting on his actions, Croc acknowledges his true nature, while Batman silently watches from the shadows, ever vigilant in his mission to protect Gotham City. In 1898, an explorer encountered a mysterious green light in an Egyptian dig, leading to chaos. In the present day, Batman thwarts Yubu's theft of the Scroll of Osiris, only to face Raz al Ghul. Batman seeks Talia's help to stop Raz from finding Thoth Kepera's tomb. They confront Raz, who ages rapidly after encountering the Queen's remains. Batman battles Thoth Kepera while Talia rescues her father. In a final struggle, Batman traps Thoth Kepera, but the tomb collapses. Batman saves Yubu before confronting Raz, who is rejuvenated. Talia releases Raz, leaving Batman to wander the desert alone. Yubu offers Batman water before departing with Raz and Talia. In Gotham's courthouse, Poison Ivy's trial sends her back to Arkham. There she's manipulated by the Mad Hatter. DA Janet Van Dorn's frustration with Batman intensifies, leading to a tense encounter. Batman intervenes but is subdued by Ivy and Harley Quinn. Later, Janet finds herself imprisoned in Arkham, where Batman is also held captive. They face an absurd trial orchestrated by the inmates with Janet defending Batman. Testimonies reveal Batman's innocence. Meanwhile, Commissioner Gordon locates Batman's signal at Arkham. As chaos erupts, Batman and Janet escape, facing the inmates in a harrowing ordeal. With Batman's help, they evade the psychopaths and are rescued by the GCPD. Janet acknowledges Batman's necessity in Gotham, while Batman accepts her commitment to a city free from his vigilantism. In a secret warehouse, Joker disrupts a gangster meeting and seizes control of an atomic bomb. Commissioner Gordon attempts citywide evacuation, but Mayor Hill refuses. Batman enlists Harley Quinn's help to stop Joker's plan. They confront Joker at his hideouts, where Harley's assistance leads to a confrontation with thugs. Harley realizes Joker's scheme involves Mayor Hill and aids Batman and Robin in rescuing him. Despite Harley's help, Joker captures Batman and Robin, intending to destroy Gotham. Harley, conflicted, turns on Joker, ultimately saving Batman and Robin from Joker's explosive plan. In a final showdown, Harley stands up to Joker, but instead of violence, Joker praises her, affirming their twisted relationship. Candace awaits Bane's arrival at Gotham Airport. Bane, hired by Rupert Thorne to eliminate Batman, confronts Killer Croc. Batman and Robin intervene, but Bane incapacitates Croc, impressing the dynamic duo. Back at the Batcave, Batman discovers Bane's origins and Thorne's involvement. Meanwhile, Candace suggests to Bane that they take control of Gotham after Batman's demise. Bane confronts Robin, leading to a struggle that ends with Robin's capture. Batman tracks Candace, learning of Bane's location. Bane and Candace hold Robin aboard a ship, intending to drown him. Batman arrives and battles Bane, ultimately overpowering him by sabotaging his Venom delivery system. Meanwhile, Robin fights Candace, ultimately subduing her. Batman delivers Bane and Candace to Thorn, exposing their treachery. As Batman departs, Thorn confronts Candace with her betrayal, leaving her fate uncertain. Harvey Dent undergoes surgery to rid himself of Two-Face, but thugs interrupt abducting him. Batman and Robin pursue Batman to Stony Penitentiary and Robin to Thorne's residence. Both villains deny involvement. Batman traces clues to the Half-Moon Club, where he confronts Two-Face, Dent's true captor. A struggle ensues, culminating in Batman's capture atop the club. Robin intervenes, saving them from the building's explosion. Dent returns to Arkham, where Bruce reassures him. Dent finds solace in their friendship. In the end, amidst Gotham's chaos, Dent reflects on the bond he shares with Bruce and Dick. The news of Edward Nigma's release from Arkham spreads in Gotham. Batman and Robin fought a theft connected to him but lack proof. 
Nigma's toy business thrives, but clues hint at his criminal resurgence. Batman deduces Nigma's plot at a toy fair, but is trapped in a deadly explosion. Surviving, he captures Nigma using his own trickery, but Nigma's obsession with Batman's escape consumes him in Arkham. Afterwards, Batman reveals his survival tactic to Alfred and Dick, leaving Nigma frustrated in his cell. Batman and Robin investigate the abduction of actors from a past TV sitcom by Mary Dahl, who played Baby Doll. Dahl, bitter over her failed acting career, seeks to recreate the show's final episode with her former castmates, intending to end their lives together. Batman and Robin intervene, rescuing the actors and confronting Dahl. In a distressing moment, Batman shows compassion for Dahl's pain and loneliness, offering her comfort despite her criminal actions. As Dahl breaks down, realizing the impossibility of her dream life, Batman's empathy shines through. With Dahl apprehended and the victim safe, Gotham City finds peace once more. In a charity auction, Bruce Wayne buys seemingly worthless items, while Dick Grayson notices Temple Fugate's mysterious appearances. Fugate steals a valuable clock using a time-altering device invented by Dr. Wakati, his employer. Batman and Robin investigate, discovering Fugate's grudge against Mayor Hill. Fugit uses the device to confront Hill, but Batman intervenes. Fugit escapes, leaving behind a clue. Tracking him to Wakati's mansion, Batman and Robin learn to use time devices to reach the courthouse where Fugit plans an attack. Batman disarms a bomb while Robin apprehends Fugit, ending his time-manipulating schemes. Wakati vows to keep his invention secret, while Fugit faces justice for his crimes. In Arkham Asylum, Harley Quinn learns she's being released. Outside, she causes chaos with her pet hyenas, then seeks a new outfit. Bruce Wayne intervenes when she causes trouble at a store, but she flees, taking Bruce's car and Veronica Vreeland. Pursued by police and Batman, she seeks aid from Boxy Bennett, but he betrays her. Batman and Robin confront Harley, leading to a chaotic chase. Harley eventually agrees to return Veronica, but General Vreeland attacks them. In a crossroads showdown, Batman saves Harley, who returns to Arkham, where Veronica drops charges. Batman shows compassion, returning the dress Harley bought. Grateful, Harley kisses him then retreats to her cell, feeling uplifted. In a bizarre turn of events, the Condiment King and Pack Rat disguise comedians wreak havoc in Gotham. Batman and Robin intervene, unmasking them as Buddy Standler and Harry Loomis, respectively. Investigating, Batman discovers a mind control chip linked to the Mad Hatter. Meanwhile, Joker kidnaps Lisa Lorraine, a comedy contest judge. At the event, Joker reveals himself, triggering chaos. Batman and Robin foil his plan, but Joker escapes to a rooftop, where he babbles Batman. Robin's timely intervention leads to Joker's comical defeat. The police arrest Joker, leaving Gotham in laughter. With the city safe, Batman and Robin depart, leaving Joker's comedic downfall behind. Amidst the theft at Gotham University, Batgirl saves Batman from a trio of villains. Suspecting Catwoman's involvement, Batgirl confronts her at the crime scene, but they soon realize they share a common enemy. Reluctantly, Batgirl agrees to work with Catwoman to track down the real thief. Despite Robin's objections, Batgirl continues her alliance with Catwoman, leading them to a chemical warehouse owned by Roland Daggett. They uncovered his scheme to frame Catwoman and profit from the stolen Jade Cat statue. In a showdown, Batgirl and Robin rescue Catwoman from Daggett's clutches, but Catwoman ultimately escapes, leaving Batgirl torn between her duty and her admiration for Catwoman. Though Catwoman eludes capture, Batgirl remains determined to uphold justice. Lockup's vendetta against those he deems corrupt escalates to the point where he kidnaps prominent figures of Gotham City, including Commissioner Gordon and Mayor Hill. Batman and Robin race against time to thwart Lockup's plans, ultimately discovering his past as the security chief during the construction of Stonebay Penitentiary and his connection to the ship F-84. In a climactic showdown aboard the ship, Lockup is defeated and apprehended, but not before Batman is forced into a dangerous struggle that nearly cost him his life. Despite Lockup's incarceration in Arkham Asylum, his presence there only serves to intensify the intrigue and tension among the inmates. A massive robot breaks Mr. Freeze out of prison, leading Batman and Robin to suspect Grant Walker, a businessman with advanced technology. Walker aims to use Freeze's physiology for immortality. Despite Freeze's initial cooperation, he later sides with Batman to thwart Walker's plan of freezing the planet. They sabotage Walker's freezing cannon, destroying his underwater city and leaving Walker encased in ice for eternity. Freeze opts to remain with his cryogenically preserved wife, Nora. Robin recovers and Batman acknowledges the possibility of facing Freeze again due to his newfound immortality. In the aftermath, Freeze and Nora find solace together amidst the frozen remnants of Walker's failed scheme. A trio of masked criminals dubbed the Terrible Trio stage a heist, injuring Robin in the process. Meanwhile, 
At a charity event, Bruce Wayne encounters the wealthy and arrogant Warren Lawford, who later robs Sheldon Fallbrook, nearly killing him. Batman intervenes, thwarting Warren's escape and rescuing Rebecca, Sheldon's daughter. Utilizing the Batwing, Batman apprehends Warren and his accomplices, ensuring justice is served. Warren is incarcerated alongside more dangerous criminals at Stonegate Penitentiary. Amidst the turmoil, Rebecca finds solace in Batman's intervention, grateful for his timely rescue. A society of shadows, led by Ra's al Ghul, breaks into Gotham retirement villas to abduct an elderly man, leaving behind a recorded message for Batman and Robin. The tape recounts a tale from 1883 involving Jonah Hex and the outlaw Arkady Duval, revealing Ra's involvement in a plot to destroy the Transcontinental Railroad. Batman deduces Ra's plan and intercepts him at the airport, where they confront each other over the kidnapped elder revealed to be Duval himself. Raz explains Duval's longevity due to exposure to the Lazarus Pit and his paternal ties to him. Despite Raz's departure, Batman anticipates their inevitable future clash as they part ways for now. Selina Kyle attends an exhibition where she clashes with Veronica Vreeland over the conservation of wildlife. Later, she's abducted by Scarface and the Ventriloquist, who coerce her into stealing jewels from Vreeland's collection. As Catwoman, she infiltrates the exhibition but opts to save endangered animals instead. Batman intervenes, and they discover Scarface's hideout. During showdown, Catwoman destroys Scarface but spares the ventriloquist. Batman arrives to stop her, but she escapes, leaving him torn between her and his duty. Despite their differences, Catwoman continues her nocturnal activities, leaving Batman to ponder their complex relationship. Detective Harvey Bullock narrowly escapes an attempt on his life and seeks Batman's help in uncovering the culprit behind the threats he's been receiving. As Batman investigates, Bullock faces danger multiple times, including a near-death encounter on the subway. With Batman's guidance, they track down Vinny the Shark, a vengeful gangster Bullock had once captured. However, their confrontation leads to a revelation. The real culprit is Bullock's landlord, Nivens, driven to madness by Bullock's messy habits. Batman intervenes, apprehending Nivens and saving Bullock once more. Grateful, Bullock acknowledges Batman's assistance, cementing their uneasy alliance in Gotham's ongoing battle against crime. Dick Grayson practices his acrobatics in the Batcave while Batman prepares for patrol, aided by Alfred. Later, Alfred receives a cryptic call, prompting him to leave for London. Concerned, Batman and Robin investigate Alfred's disappearance and learn of his past as a British agent. They travel to England, where they confront thugs and uncover Red Claw's plot to launch a missile. Batman foils her plan, saving London and rescuing Alfred. Back home, Alfred reaffirms his commitment to Wayne Manor, grateful for his role in the family's safety. So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then do let us know about your favorite episode of the series. Also, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next one.